So you want to build a custom water loop, and you want to be sure to get all the right parts and to put it all together the right way. But most importantly, you don't want to spend a fortune on overpriced junk. Well, Real Big Daddy EK Water Blocks knows what you need and has just released their new Classic Series Liquid Cooling Kit. And I'm going to show you how to build it, step by step. Hey there, tech boys and girls. Welcome. Real quick, I wanted to give a shout out to EK Waterblocks for supplying me with all these sweet parts so that I can show you how to build a brand new custom loop. So EK's new Classic Series is kind of similar to Corsair's Hydro X in a couple of areas. They both have pretty RGB. You can get both as a complete package and are both supposed to be easy for first time water building boys. But the biggest difference is the price. Starting at just $280, you can get EK's classic complete CPU liquid cooling kit. And it comes with everything you need to get your custom loop up and running. It'll even scratch that RGB itch we all have, including me. But just because they added RGB and lowered the noise emissions and made it super affordable, doesn't mean they've gotten away from their motto of less talk and more cooling. So no matter what, performance is at the heart of this kit. So we're gonna get into all the parts that come inside this kit. Then I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step of how to put it all together. I am pumped. So what you're seeing here is the classic RGB S240 kit for only $280. And like I said, it does come with every single thing you need to put the kit together. You're not gonna have to go out and buy anything else. We've got the Supremacy Classic CPU water block, the Coolstream Classic SE240 radiator, the XRES 140 Classic Water Pump Reservoir Combo, two of the Vardar Evo RGB radiator fans, two meters of soft tubing, six nickel compression fittings, the Cryofuel Clear Concentrate, a pump bracket, all the cables you're gonna need, and the mounting kits for both Intel and AMD along with the screws. Hot dog, this is a lot of really great stuff. EK also sent me a GPU water block for my RTX 2080 to show you how to put that on, as well as some hard tubing. So I'm gonna do another build soon where it's gonna be a hard tubing and adding uh, the GPU water block to this build specifically. So it's gonna be another sweet build. For benchmarks, I'm using Cinebench, Blender, and 30 minutes of Division Two. So at 3.7 on all cores, we have an idle of 28 degrees, and at 4.0, it was only 30 degrees. At 3.7 on Cinebench, we had a top of 56 degrees with a score of 3509. And at 4.0, we hit 61 degrees at 3838. So at the cost of only five degrees, we actually went up 9% in performance. And in Blender, 3.7 hit 57 degrees and 4.0 hit 63 degrees. Blender puts a great consistent load on your CPU. So this is a great way to see how it would be handled if it was getting hit over and over. And running 30 minutes of Division 2 at 3.7, we hit only 42 degrees with an average frame rate of 94. And at 4.0, we hit 47 degrees at 96. But this isn't too CPU intensive, so it's just a good little bit of performance. The big takeaway from everything is that on all my testing, we never got above 63 degrees. And that's even with a pretty significant stable overclock. If you wanna do these benchmarks yourself, just go, the links are down below and just subscribe, just do it. Subscribe, do it. So now we're finally here. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna put it all together. Remember, we don't need any specialty tools. You might just need a screwdriver, but all the other stuff is included. The only thing not included is your imagination. I started by laying out all the parts and pieces that I need for the loop. Let's begin by taking out the water block screws to install the AM4 mounting plate. And then once we have that in there, put the screws back in and boom, the CPU is ready to roll. And then I'm gonna grab the pump radiator combo, unscrew the legs off, install the pump bracket underneath and just screw it back on and it's ready for action. I'm putting the fans on the open hole side of the radiator, which is gonna push the air through the rad. Then just send the long screws down into the holes and tighten it up. And be careful not to over tighten. And really that goes with any computer part. Let's grab our tubes and fittings and then separate the compression fittings into two pieces. Send the tube through the outer fitting and then push the tube onto the barb fitting. 
bring the fitting pieces together and tighten. This was mainly just a demonstration. You're gonna wanna wait until everything's in its final place before actually putting the barb on. This is a liquid concentrate, and on the bottle it says to mix it with 900 milliliters of distilled water. So I'm gonna do just that. Filling this specific reservoir is pretty easy, so I'm just gonna use a pitcher and be careful and pour it in. Install whichever mounting kit works best for your motherboard, and keep the long screws up so we can thread the water block onto the CPU next. Add the EK recommended two rice grains of thermal paste to the CPU, then slip on the water block and add the springs and tighten down, two diagonal sides at a time. For mounting your pump res combo, there's no exact answer, but a general rule is to have it mounted lower than the radiator and installed securely. Place your radiator and fans into whatever position you want, and oh man, we are almost there and it's looking clean. Let's screw the barbs into the sockets of each cooling component. EK was nice enough to mark the in and out on the block amp pump, so put the tubes on the associated barb and work it on there until it's tight, then carefully but firmly twist the compression fitting on. For the wires, we're gonna plug all four of the RGB headers into the RGB splitter that was included, then plug that right into the board. Those are also gonna plug into the splitter and you're gonna plug that into the motherboard as well. And now for the best part, fill it up and try it out but I do like to add paper towels under the CPU just in case something goes wrong. I don't see any leaks, I think we're good to go, and hot mama look at her shine. So there you go. I hope one, you're able to now put together your EKWB Classic kit or just anybody that's building a CPU loop. So that was a lot of fun. It was very, very easy. It looks wonderful. And the whole point of all of it, you're able to get this complete CPU kit for $280. Looking at Corsair's offering for the cheapest full package that they can offer, it's, I believe it's just above 400 bucks. So that's a huge difference. Yeah, their RGB might be a little more intricate and you might have a little bit more control outside of what the motherboard gives you, but we're talking over a hundred bucks. I think it was 120, 130. That is very, very different. Again, thank you to EK Waterblocks. This was awesome. Thank you guys so much for sending me this stuff. Uh, it was truly a delight to work on and I hope that you people, you people, I hope you guys uh, got some useful information out of it again. Uh, in the next video about the stuff that they sent me, they sent me the hard tubing and the hard fittings and the uh, GPU for the RTX 2080. So I'm gonna do another one and we're gonna go through the hard tubing build as well. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Thank you so much for watching. Love you hard. If you want to talk to my face, add me on Facebook and Twitter, join my Discord and come chat, and check out my other Dankalicious videos. Holla!